turn out with new faces, like old faces. <laughs> right, we had quite a few developments in the last week I'm down the country. Uh, last week and a half I'm down the country. All good stuff. We've got them in the run now. Uh, the idea tonight was uh, I'll give you a quick overrun on what fundamental freedoms are. I won't do a big long talk on it, we'll save that for another day. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video uh, presentation on it anyway, so we'll go on YouTube. Uh, this is key, fundamental freedoms is key. It's what we're here in the room for is our fundamental freedoms, full stop, end of story. Okay? To have those fundamental freedoms realised, recognised and protected, and for us to know what they are so we can actually, if you don't know what they are, you haven't got them. So if we know what they are, we can, we can have them. And then what we'll do is, uh, I'll do probably about 10, 15 minutes on that, and then I'll explain what uh, the little hero in the corner did on Friday in the, in the magistrate, Wigan Magistrate's Court and actually tore a court apart, dismantled it, left the judge speechless, right, with no power. Uh, so we'll, we'll run over that as well. And I believe David have a, a resulting court as well. And a uh, friend of mine, uh, Nala, I don't know, some of you may, may be on the interweb, uh, met Nala, you, you all know, get him down to give us a talk. He's a, a rough egg from, from Glasgow, uh, but he's one of these guys, he's a very, very unassuming character, but by God he's got a brain that's, that's formidable. He went down to Crown Court in London last week and presented himself as a natural man, special attorney in fact for the legal person, and the judge accepted it. Fantastic. How big is that? Yeah, that's so a natural man. That's a, that's, a, that's a Crown Court, they know the law, they're not like the Muppets who go in the magistrates in the county court. Anyway, so the... Uh, so he had a, 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 he, over, he got a bankruptcy hearing overturned and has gone back to liability order to the council. He's going to get that dismantled again. So he's going to take it from right from the brink back to the beginning again. So uh, that, was, that was quite humbling that uh, it was something that I found a special attorney in fact. And it's nice to see somebody of Nala's sort of uh, uh, prestige using it successfully. And he's actually proven in the Crown, the Crown Court that you can represent a legal person as a natural person, which is quite, quite good. Uh, so anyway, what we'll do is we'll just run over fundamental freedoms very quickly. Uh, fundamental freedoms. Do you all know the difference between freedoms and rights? Hands up if you do, hands up if you don't. Be honest, it's, it's, be honest with yourself. Okay. Right. What might be clearing it up? Okay. A freedom is something you have. It's inherent. It's, 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 it's with you. It's, 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 it's not something that's gifted to you. It's not something you can ask for or presented to you. It's something you have, right? Natural. A right. Natural. Doesn't have to be natural. No. A right is something which is used to protect those freedoms. Okay? So the right is the mechanism by which they protect those freedoms. So what they've done is a switch and beat on is they've got us all looking at rights. Is that I've got you these little in scrolls around. I've got rights, I've got rights. No, you don't. You've got the rights that the government decides you have, right, uh, at the moment. Uh, because if you don't understand what your freedoms are, you don't know what your rights are, right? Uh, so anyway, so the focus is, there's been a switch and bait, as I say, over the last, I don't know, 20, 30 years. What they've got us do, what they've, do, they've got us doing is talking about our rights. And we're like, oh, you've got rights, you've got rights. No rights, right? Uh, 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 and what they've not been doing is talking about freedoms. Now, for example, the European Convention of Human Rights, which you call it now, right? In 1915, it was originally drafted by the Council of Europe. It's called the European Convention on Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms. Why have they dropped the fundamental freedoms off the end of it? The fact they've dropped it off, it dropped it off, should tell us we need to be looking at that, okay? Because they don't want us to know what our fundamental freedoms are. Rights are gifted to you, right? They're, you do have inherent rights. You do a natural person does have rights. You also have civil rights. I'll do a bigger talk on this another day. Uh, there's a lot of different types of rights and there's a lot of conflicts between rights. Uh, but essentially, the rights are there to protect your freedoms and the majority of rights you enjoy today are purely there by the, 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 the gift of the government and they, are, and they are civil rights. Okay, I'm not interested in civil rights. Okay, uh, I'll stick to freedom, thank you very much. Now, what they've done is uh, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights defined freedoms that we have. Didn't, go and didn't say this is your freedoms or list, right? It's in, if you read the document, okay? As you read the document, you'll find his freedoms in there for you, right? Uh, it doesn't try to define your freedoms because Universal Declaration was designed for lots of different countries. So there's no point in putting a list of this is your freedoms. Because <coughs> what would apply to one country wouldn't apply to another. So they didn't go to that extent. Your freedoms are derived from your constitution. We do have one in this country. Uh, your constitution, uh, your customs, 
your traditions, your religious beliefs, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, what your social class is, there's all raft of things can, can, can decide what your, what your fundamental freedoms are. My own personal view is that the fundamental freedoms I would like to have, one is life and liberty for everything else. Life and liberty, right? I've got the freedom to have that, right? Uh, I've got the freedom to contract. But if you don't have the freedom to contract, you're a slave. If you get limited freedoms, you're a serf or a servant. I want freedom to contract and freedom not to contract. That's the big one. You have freedom to protect my property and protect my family. Right? Uh, and uh, everything else can fall. There's, there's other freedoms in the back of that, but essentially those would be the main freedoms I would have. And if we could have those freedoms uh, get, uh, protected for us, uh, the world would be a much better place. I think everyone would agree. Uh, the government, the state as they call it, the state is obliged under a number of international treaties to protect our freedoms, observe, recognise and protect those freedoms, right? And uh, to, to protect the rights, the inherent rights we have, and to provide us other rights to protect those freedoms. They haven't done a very good job of that, though. It's almost as if they're scared of us having too much freedoms. And as we found out recently, well, not, not so much recently, we've found for quite a while now, the government has got a, fo a focus now on the public good. My backside twitches when I see the words, but the, the, the boosting the public good overrides your individual your individual rights and freedoms. And that to me is back to front, that's communism. When you talk about if the, the, the public interest takes first. There is a com there is a a compromise got to be reached between the freedoms that you enjoy, your obligations to other people around you, and also the obligations that the state has to you know, to, to, to maintain a, a peaceful society. So there is a compromise to be reached. I'm not saying that we should all have a freedom to anything we want, of course we can. You cannot have the freedom to murder. I'll try telling that to our government. They do, they do quite a good job in Afghanistan and Iraq at the moment, but uh, uh, the freedom to murder, I mean, no, nobody's going to say I've got the right to go and murder people. You know, that's just uh, the freedom to murder people. That's just, that's just madness, you know. With abortion, no? Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, now you're there, absolutely. That's, that's where the rights start getting a bit. There's a compromise to be reached, and everybody's got their views on it. But uh, absolutely, the, 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 so the, 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 uh, you've got to balance your obligations to other people, not the state, not talk about big society and crap, I'm just talking about the people around about you. You've got an obligation, I don't hurt you, you don't hurt me, I won't steal your stuff, you don't steal my stuff, we'll live happily ever after. So there's obligations, if it's somebody, if somebody's ill or somebody's not doing too well, you offer them a hand. If you see somebody short a few quid, you'll offer them a couple of quid, you know, it's the how society should work. What's happened is the big societies come in and taken all that that goodness and charity away. And what's what they call charity now is an absolute travesty of the word charity. Uh, this is just corporate corporations hiding behind the word charity. You know, social engineering hiding behind the word charity. Now these are not charities, a lot of them. Uh, so I mean, the, the, because of that, they've kind of dwindled. The the, the affected the. Uh, uh, the desire for people to go and help other people now because we're thinking, oh, the state will do it. No. Anyway, so your fundamental freedoms are yours. No one can take them away from you. Universal Declaration, no one can interpret them. Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the Universal Co Covenants and the European Convention, right? They cannot take them away from you. What they can do is fiddle with your rights. Now, what they've done is they've presented you with freedoms and rights. Many, many years ago, they presented you with freedoms and rights. They presented your parents and their guardians with freedom and, freedoms and rights. And you've ne you just accepted them. I did. We never rebutted them. We just accepted the rights they give us. Why? So now is the time that we and there's some work happening in the background. Now is the time when we have to stand up and say, no, actually, these are my rights. I'm not just standing on top of standing, bleating into the wind. You need to write letters. Get them into the Secretary of State. Get them into the police. Get them into your council. These are my freedoms. Your job is to protect them. I'm not asking you. I'm not requesting. I'm telling you. To, to, to protect these. You've, you've signed an international treaty agreeing to do that. Hence, that's why I'm sitting here uh, I, uh, uh, letting you guys be in charge of me. If you're not protecting my fundamental freedoms, what the hell job is you? What, what job have you got? Why should I even be talking to you guys? So if you've betrayed my fundamental freedoms, I've no interest in even talking to you guys. So you need to be doing what's called expressing your freedoms. I'll be producing some documentation soon in this one. You can do what you want with it. Uh, but essentially, there's uh, going to be a declaration of fundamental freedoms going to be issued soon. There's a big team in the background working on this. Uh, and what we're going to do is suggest a sort of covenant 
an agreement, a meeting of minds between people, independent people, uh, uh, and those those will agree what our fundamental freedoms are. We will do a mass signing of it. It's not a petition, it's not a request, it's a declaration. Right? These are our freedoms, do not mess with them. Right? That way, in the future, somebody says, oh, you've got to do this. I don't, I've already declared my freedoms. Okay? Uh, so it's, it's a really powerful thing. So this, the, the, the whole concept of freedoms is fairly simple. You go into your rights and it becomes a, a quagmire of politics and commerce. and It becomes very, very, very... Uh, uh, it's kept a lot of philosophers busy for a few centuries, put it that way. Right, there's quite a few books been there read. Actually, I'm actually reading the book just now, but I tried to read the book just now, I gave up. It's called An Introduction to Rights. And it's like, my, I can't, I can't begin to understand what the guy's talking about. It's just, it's, it's just made it so complex. It shouldn't be that complex. Uh, the one thing it did, did does jump out, there's a few things that jump out with rights I should bring to your attention, right? Anyone in the future says to you, I don't recognise you as an actual person, there's no such thing as an actual person. We've all had that, yeah? We've all had that from these little official drones, right? Pointing the, much as I hate to say this, this phrase that the Human Rights Act, right, pointing to it, because in there it states it does recognise there is natural persons and legal persons. There's one of the paragraphs that talks about natural persons and legal persons enjoying the right to private property, right? It does state in there natural and legal persons. All the other stuff does as well, the other human rights stuff as well. I'll do a bigger talk in another day about that, but it's just look up freedoms. Uh, just, to, just to give an idea of how they've played with our freedoms. I've done a very quick, uh, done a very quick scan today through the. Uh, right, this is a uh, from you've heard of Black's Law Dictionary. Have you all of you heard of that? Yeah? yeah. Okay, Black's Law Dictionary is a big American dictionary. It's the pretty much the daddy of all legal dictionaries. And uh, the, the the Black's Law Dictionary, it's been going for well over a hundred years now. But it's interesting because you can see how the laws were interpreted and twisted and poked and wordsmithed over the years uh, by going back over the nine, the nine editions, going back to the very first one and chasing the word through all the nine editions, you can see it's changed meaning. So for example, Black's first, which is, I believe was 1890, <coughs> uh, the word freedom, it states, this is the legal definition remember, the state of being free, liberty, self-determination, absence of restraint, the opposite of slavery, the power of acting, power, remember that word, the power of acting and the character of a moral personality according to the, the dictates will. without other ch uh, check, hindrance or pro pro prohibition or other such as may be imposed by just and necessary laws and the duties of social life. The prevalence in the government and constitution of a country of such a system of laws and institutions as secure civil liberty to the individual citizen. That's, that's good and that's, 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 that's nice. Now we go to the, fifth, uh, the fourth. Right, the, so the fourth was up to 1978. The fourth edition was the latest edition up to 1978. And it says exactly the same. So from 1890 up to 1978, the meaning of freedom hadn't changed. Then we go to after that. And they changed it. Freedom. This is from 1979. The state of being free or liberated, a political right. <coughs> okay. So this is the big granddaddy of the, the see, see they even play with legal dictionaries. Don't pick up a modern legal, I've told you all this, don't pick up a modern legal dictionary and think that is a definition. You can go back to older legal dictionaries and use definitions out there. You'll find old ones that get better definitions. Cause, don't, uh, they, don't they supersede what's going to be fast? Those definitions, the, the 1979? Supersede. Got, uh, you can quote whatever you want, mate, if it suits you, quote whatever you want. From way back? Yeah. The, well, the, what doesn't it mean that that's defunct? Sort no, of thing? The, no. Well, this interpretation Black's Ninth, we call it, it's the new, it's the new one that just came out this year, Black's, Black's Ninth. Uh, within the movement we call it the Corporate Dictionary. It's been so bent now, it's meaningless. Uh, the Oxford uh, Dictionary of Law now, as a comic book, chucking it in, is so political. It was written by Bloody Barroso himself, it's so EU orientated, right? It's a, it's a nonsense, right? Go back into older dictionaries, guys, don't just use the new ones. Get older dictionaries, you know, and if anyone's looking for dictionaries, I could put dictionaries your way. I keep, I keep hearing references to Black's Law and, the, and the, it's an American document. I've tried to find an equivalent in, the, in, the, in, in England. Obviously. Yeah, Americans have different, the, the dictionaries in America are black and white because Americans had citizens who needed to know the law, who exercised the law. 
in Britain they have subjects that didn't want us to know the law. So the law dictionaries in, in England are pretty dire, yeah. to say the least, dire. But the Oxford Dictionary Law is a joke, right? They're, they're dire, right? So because the American system is based upon the English system, we can, and it's just a common law. One for one on the book of summons, for example. And, and, and on, against summons, it says an order to go to court. Yeah. Which I understand is not the definition of a summons. There you go, it's a modern dictionary. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's Oxford one. Yeah, is that, that's the Oxford dictionary, yeah. is an order to an go to court. An order to go to court, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. If, if you look at the dictionaries, by the way, I would strongly recommend to people before you look up the legal dictionary definition, there's two or three good commercial dictionaries on the internet. Look up the commercial definition first. Everything's commerce. Look up the commercial definition first. So when they say an order to go to court, what is an order? Yeah. Right? Uh, okay, if you look up the word rights in commercial, it's interesting as well. So anyway, so I've ran over freedoms very briefly. Uh, you need to know what your freedoms are. Uh, if you don't know what they are, you can't protect them. And rights are irrelevant. And as I keep telling people, if you don't know what your rights are, don't know what your freedoms are, you don't have any. I had a bit of a blast on the radio yesterday with some guy that wrote me. Uh, because I keep talking about United Nations and Universal Declaration and Human Rights and Freedoms and well, it's, 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 the reason, it's not the reason why we're in this room, it's because we want our freedoms back. Is, is that not why we're here? It's what, at the end of the line, that's what we're after. Mm -hmm. uh, and for some guy to stand there, I'm not doing that because United Nations, blah, blah, blah. God sake, you know. If you actually read any of this stuff, I wouldn't read that crap. Uh, so in that case, mate, you don't know your freedoms, you haven't got any, you haven't got any. You don't know your rights, you haven't got any. Good luck out there, right? He doesn't even know what he's fighting for, he doesn't know what he's, what he's struggling for. So anyway, right, so I'll end it there on the, the subject of freedom. We'll do a proper big uh, lecture shortly on what freedoms is. And it'll be, I'll maybe not do it here, I'll maybe do it outside here and uh, just post it on YouTube for you guys to watch. Uh, right, on court on Friday, uh, following on from the last video I did, which I hope all of you have seen, have you all seen the video from the last uh, presentation I did about the council tax? Has everyone not seen it? Okay, it's on from the week before. Yeah. If you go to the Freedom Northwest website, there's a link on here. Click on it. Just join today. Before it came in, it says the most seat. That one. Yeah, that's the one. Look at you now, ready for it. That's right. That's right. That's right. So that basically gives the background for those who don't already know about the council tax hearing. I've got an interesting route, I think, to go for the council tax. I'm not standing there using some sort of trap, some gurus in America or Canada spouting, you know. They'll, they'll use that, right? We've gone for the route. I'm not interested in arguing with them. I'm going for the route. Who are you? What is your authority? What is your powers? What powers are you presuming? Prove it to me. Blah, blah, blah. What is this council tax? What is it for? Do you have a contract? Are my freedoms in it? You know, so there's these, these, these questions, you know. And uh, so anyway, the council point blank refused. Don't go over that again, but the council point blank refused to uh, engage with us. Refused to even sit down and discuss it with us, right? Uh, they apparently don't recognise natural persons, which is nice of them. Uh, anyway, so on Friday, uh, oh, we got a summons, oh my good lady, got a summons to go to court last Wednesday in Wigan Magistrates Court. Wednesday, I believe, is the, the time for normal people to go to Magistrates Court for council tax, right? So then we got a letter a few days beforehand from a chap called Sean McNally. Hi, Sean. How you doing, mate? Uh, Sean McNally, uh, who's presented himself as designated officer. I said, what is this designated officer? And yet when you dig into him, you find out he's actually not designated. Whatever designated, I mean, designated officer is anything, you can call it your own, right? But there's a, uh, do I have it here? There it is. So if you go into the HM Courts and Tribunal Service Board website, there's a chap called Sean McNally on the website, and his, his title is uh, Executive Member of the HM Court Tribunal Services Board, Director of Crime. <laughs> that's who signed our summons, Sean. Okay, that's who signed our summons. What the fuck are you doing signing our summons? Okay. Anyway, so, uh, we're on you, mate. Okay. Uh, so we've got a, a, a summons signed by Sean McNally, Director of Crime, issuing vague threats of issuing warrants if there's a known, if we don't turn up, if my, my good lady doesn't turn up, issue warrants, he's a big tough guy, this Sean McNally. 
He's a real tough man, likes bullying little ladies like this, you know, because he's got a big important fucking title. He likes bullying people. <laughs> You're a fucking moron, mate, honestly, boy. <laughs> big bully, bully, bully. You think you're a tough man, didn't you? Anyway, we would see who's a tough man. Anyway, so, uh, Mr. Director of Criminal, uh, sorry, Criminal per Persuasions or Crime, is it? Anyway, uh, we're in the court on Friday, so we decided to go in there and invite them, because then they were, were getting threatened, because people are threatening us, you know, not asking us, inviting us, threatening us now. If you don't turn up, we're going to send big men out to kick your door down and steal your property and stuff, Mr. Sean McNally, okay? Uh, what was his so, name, Rob? Sean McNally's Sean name was, that's S-H-A-U-N, ah, right. M-small C, N-A-L-L-Y. <laughs> he likes to kick, hide behind the title of designated officer, but he's actor, actually director of crime, funnily enough, I mean there's a good title for it, director of crime, HMCTS, executive member of the board. Okay? Director of crime. So anyway, she went in on the Friday, uh, and surprisingly, there was no police. We didn't get the, the police presence this time, uh, which is a result in itself because you realise now we're not a threat, we're good guys, we stand there and defend our freedoms and rights. Hey, good guys. And uh, anyway, so that we're standing there, defend our freedoms and rights, and we're good guys, so the police have obviously some deal with us, and the police are obviously not going to waste the manpower again, sending the fucking A team and tactics one unit and God knows what, you know, in for, for, for a couple of defending council tactics. Uh, the courts, obviously, as well, uh, backed off because we didn't see the same faces this time. Strange, it was different people this time. So, uh, we went in there, and I was also the council solicitor. Actually, a very nice young lady, she appeared to be a very nice young lady. There's that, that's some good people in the system, there's some very good people in the system, you know, uh, just get shitty jobs. Uh, and uh, she was she was there as the uh, the council solicitor, just on her own. And I went over there to give her the, 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 the pack that I'd prepared, and she told me she wasn't allowed to talk to me. Uh, so, uh, so obviously I was there as the natural person, because I'm 95% natural person, 5% legal, and my good lady was there as a legal person. Anyway, so uh, uh, we prepared quite a heavy pack, basically challenging the whole last case. The fact that this, what they've done now is to put the two cases together, last year's alleged council tax and this year's alleged council tax. Remember, the last hearing we had was uh, specific to last year's council tax. There's all sorts of uh, procedural problems with it, identity problems with it. There's the guy, the, 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 the Justice Clark, or whoever it is, he is, had, had signed this, had signed off a summons on the basis of an, a, a complaint that doesn't actually exist. My God, we define these people. Uh, so that's, that's negligence, misconduct in public office. You'll be hearing from me shortly, by the way, we're working on it now. Okay. Uh, the, the previous judge, uh, he wasn't to be seen. No idea what's happened to him. Uh, we didn't, uh, uh, my good lady didn't get a chance to explain to the judge why she was using the word alleged in front of her name. He didn't ask, he just jumped all over human rights and fundamental freedoms and decided to be a complete arse and bully her again. Uh, so we, put, we explained all the background to that, everything was in there, and tore apart the, 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 the process, uh, asking lots of questions. We have had no disclosure and we've had no uh, 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 discovery. We've had no disclosure and no discovery. Right, which is great if you think we're in the law. Okay, I'm about to show. I'm about to show you somebody's going to open your eyes up on the council tax. Anyway, so uh, we invited into the room. We attended the room. So this is verbatim what happened in the room. Okay, this is, and my good lady will verify what happened here. So what she did was she was bricking it. I'll be honest with you, bricking it because these bullying bastards who've been frightening and threatening her. Right. She was absolutely bricking it, right? At one point she was sobbing with fear and she stood her ground against this judge. This, this judge might enjoy her job. I think it's a game. It's a game, isn't it? It's a game of chess. We, we look smart, these little serfs, you know. This is people's lives you're dealing with. You're that woman with absolute crap on herself in that court and you're just a bully, okay? It's easy standing on your side of the bar. Try standing on the other side of the bar. You're not that tough. Anyway, so she went into the court and she said, uh, she stood there and uh, the judge said, who are you? Okay, trying to take joinder, you understand the joinder thing, right? Uh, I'll use the word court for now. Uh, I'll, I won't be giving it all that nonsense, but that's effectively the same as a court or hearing, right? Uh, so she, she walked into the room, she said the words, I, blah, 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 the natural person, present myself to this administrative hearing as the legal person, Mrs. Blah, blah. 
However, I do this under condition, under duress, and in distress. However, I have under duress complied with the instructions of Sean McNally, the designated officer, and I hope that by doing so, this man and HMCTS will now cease sending me threatening and harassing letters which are causing me distress and alarm. And they were causing a distress and alarm. So that point, the judge acknowledged that. So far, so good. So she says, well, I've got more to say, madam. And feel free to jump in if I'm saying anything wrong here. They asked me again, are you in blah, blah, blah? And I said, yes, but I'm the, I will take this legal title, but I'm the duress. So under duress, no joined or created, okay? So, madam, as you have a legal and professional obligation today, and in this place of business, and under your oath of court, not oath of office, first and foremost to recognise, preserve, and protect the fundamental freedoms and human rights of all present, can I ask the jurisdiction and authority by which you and this hearing act in order that I can establish which my human rights and fundamental freedoms are threatened, that I may defend them and to ensure that you are minded to recognise, preserve and protect all of my fundamental freedoms and human rights diligently and competently as a representative of the Crown and the State and the judiciary. I'll break that down so you can understand what's, what's been thrown out there as a bit loaded, right? So what we're saying is she has a legal and a professional obligation. She's an employee of the state. The state signed up to these international treaties saying they have got a duty, they have an obligation to protect and preserve our freedoms, okay? So we're putting her under notice of that, we're placing her under notice. She's now working for us, okay? But she should be, okay? Uh, in this place of business, it's a place of business. You go into the HMCTS website, it's all the way through it. It's a place of business. They laugh when you ask them that question. You go, yeah, we don't mean that. It's a place where we're all busy. That's what it means, it's a place where we're busy. It's a game for them, you know, it's fun. You know, they've lost track of the fact that human beings out there, lives are destroying, you know. It's fun for them, it's a big game, you know. They can't play Monopoly. Let's go and destroy a few people's lives for a laugh today. Okay? Uh, and under your oath of court, now I've got a Freedom of Information request from Wigan Council. We've asked the question, what oath do they swear? These, these, these people swear when they're in these uh, hearings. And they swear an oath of court, not their oath of office. Do you all know the difference? No. Hands up if you don't. When a judge is sworn in as a judge, they swear an oath of court. That's uh, so an oath of office, sorry. They swear an oath of office. That's, that's, that's the formal oath they swear to Majesty the Queen, which gives them the power of a judge. Okay, they are a judge at that point, right? Acting under the Crown, acting in a judicial capacity, okay? An oath of court is what a tribunal or an arbitrator swears, right? It's not even a swearing, they don't swear it, right? It's just an attestation or whatever they do. They, most of the time they don't even do it. But uh, if you get into an arbitration hearing, the person that's sitting as arbitrator will do some sort of oath, to, of oath of court or make some sort of some sort of gesture that they will do act impartially, blah, 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 but it's not a judicial role. Okay, big, 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 big difference, right? She may be calling herself a judge, she's not a proper judge under oath of office, okay? She's whatever under oath of court, okay, an arbitrator or whatever. Okay, so first and foremost, to recognise, preserve and protect, to recognise, to understand what rights are, preserve them, you, have them in front of you, and protect them. You've got a duty then to make sure you are protecting them. Not waiting for me to protect them, your job is to protect them, right? So no waiting for me to say, Madam, I've got a right, your job is to f say, hold on a minute, his rights have been, our rights have been uh, 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 damaged here, infringed here, yeah. Okay, to protect the fundamental freedoms of human rights of all present. So that was myself as a natural person and uh, uh, my good lady as the uh, legal person. Can I ask the jurisdiction and authority by which you and this hearing act? Do you understand how big that is, yeah? yeah? All the three men have had problems. Roger Hayes, the, what happened last year in Birkenhead, who arrested the judge, was because the judge refused to, start, refused to de declare the jurisdiction of the court, right? Uh, he refused to declare oath, oath of, he, he was acting under his oath of office or oath of court. So that's why we arrested the judge last year. We decided not to do it on Friday, what could have done? Because uh, the judge at that point went, I've got, I, I've got authority, I'm a judge, I've sworn an oath to the Queen, of course I've got authority, I'm a judge. That's what she's thought. She, she comes across as not a bad woman, she's got a shitty job. She, she comes across as a nice woman, to be honest, right? It was uh, naughty. It was naughty. <laughs> she, she's playing games with people's lives here. She's, she switches off the conscience, she goes into work in the day and destroys people's lives. I'm sure she goes back home, she switches the conscience back on as a, a lovely family woman, you know. This is this, this, this corporate way they, they can mess with your head, you know. I've been there myself. Uh, 
So she's you know, she focused on the authority. She's making this big, yes, I've got authority, I'm a judge. Okay, well, nobody's questioning that at the moment, right? Uh, you are a judge outside this room. Yes, you've got authority, right? But she, what, she didn't, what, she refused, what she didn't mention at that time was what jurisdiction she was under. If I'm sitting at the back, ready to step in a special permit, a permit Special attorney, in fact, for an S. I'd caught this, right? So I'm like, yeah. She's sitting there in court one of Wigan Magistrates Court, right? Court one, the big one, this is where all the big guys go, right? Under the Crown, under the Court of Royal Coat of Arms. She's sitting under the Royal Coat of Arms. So is the jurisdiction getting declared there, isn't it, because she's sitting under a Coat of Arms? Would you agree with me? Yes. She's presenting herself as having that. <coughs> what possible jurisdictions could she have stated? You'll find it in Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, no, but she's no, sitting no. under the Royal Coat of Arms, presenting to us that this is a, 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 a trial under the Crown. This is yeah, yeah. a judicial hearing, yeah. right? That's what we're picking up from this, right? <laughs> Misrepresentation. Anyway, uh, and blah 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 blah. So we've asked her that. So she, she's made a big thing about her authority. She's praying up for the free man nonsense again, right? Uh, our friend, I may defend them, blah, blah, blah. And, I've, and what I've done is, at the end of it, I've said that you've used words like diligently and competently. Those are Bangalore principles. This is the principles of judicial conduct that judges must comply with. Must comply with. Okay? Uh, so I've thrown, lifted it with these words, okay? Uh, and basically put her on notice that she's there to work for us to protect our fundamental freedoms and human rights. So putting her on notice, you've got a job to do as well, you darling, you know? Anyway, so uh, after she finished uh, uh, making this big song and dance, I am a judge, you know. Uh, can I, my, uh, uh, my good lady said, can I have your assurance, assurance madam, that you carry your obligations independently and with impartiality? Two more of the Bangalore principles, okay? And of course I will. That's what I'm here to do. That's why I'm a judge, okay? Okay. So, was there anything else? Have I missed it at that point? No. Then I ask her about the jurisdiction. Yes, that's right. She was, I, I, I'm at the back, I shouted, what be your jurisdiction? Vaness so picked up on that and she said, Madam, what is your jurisdiction? And the judge said to me, I'm not going to uh, divulge that information. <laughs> said I, to, I, said I to have to ask her, but she, I, I think you should. Yeah. Uh, and she said, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, that no, so I'll just repeat that again, right? We asked the judge, my good lady asked the judge, what jurisdiction are you standing here under? And the judge said, I refuse to divulge information. And my good lady said, well, I think you should be divulging information because I don't know what, what was happening here. And the judge said that twice again, I'm not going to divulge information. She okay. didn't look me into my... This is at the same time she's sitting under the she crown. Says, I'm not going to, I looked down. Yeah, she didn't even look, look her in the eye. Does she not have to? I'm, I'm sitting in this, the stalls, yes. in the yes. court, there's only... Absolutely. Oh, what power she got over you? Authority she presented? So is she breaking that contract that she had with you for particular rights by not saying, you know I mean, you've got a right to know. You, you don't know who she is. You don't know the court is. You don't know the jurisdiction the court's under. Yeah. Is this a criminal court? Is it a civil well, court? Is it maritime? Is it... Hasn't she broken that, that agreement you had of protecting your rights straight away? Yeah. Absolutely. How, how do we know what rights we have? What freedoms we have and rights we have if we don't know what jurisdiction we're under? We don't know what freedom. How can she say we're protecting your freedoms and rights if she's not going to tell us what jurisdiction is under? That's one aspect of it. The second aspect, aspect of it is absolute fraud. That's what I stayed judge for last year. She's sitting under that royal coat of arms and she won't tell us what jurisdiction she's under. And the third question, why should be such a secret? Yes. Well, we know it's why it's a secret. Because you're democracy and openness. Because I'm sitting there making a big, a big deal of looking at the crowd of arms and looking at her. <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so my good lady moved on to the next part. So we established the judges not going to tell what jurisdiction we're under. We could have walked out to that point, yes, but decided to carry on. Right? We could have walked out to that point, right? Uh, Madam, you will note from the application for representation that I've decided to have my partner and power of attorney to represent me today at this hearing. She's entitled to representation, isn't she? It's a freedom. Uh, as explained previously, English is not my first language, which it isn't. Not mine either, you will laugh at that. And due to past experience dealing with authority figures under the Soviet regime, I feel intimidated, at which point she was interrupted by the Justice Clark, another lady, uh, and she said, I can assure you, madam, this is not a Soviet court. And I still sit in the back and laugh. <laughs> Even the judge looked a bit sheepish at this point, you know, the dawning realisation it is a Soviet style court. So, anyway. So I mean, she, she got really sort of quite emotional at this point, just with built up the frustration and the fear, you know. 
and sitting, sitting in the back of court watching a woman there stand up to her, or stand up to this organised criminal racket, let's be honest what it is, right? And she's standing so built up, they've got nothing to lose, she's got a lot to lose, we can't afford, well, she can't afford this money that they're demanding offer. They haven't justified why to give it, they haven't asked any of her questions, basically the whole case so far has been, give us your money, or we'll come and hurt you. That is the case. We've asked them questions, we've asked for disclosure, we've asked for a discovery, we've asked all this stuff, and they've never once come back and given us a decent courtesy of responding to our questions. We did the, 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 the Justice Clark, we wrote him a letter. Could you give us some discovery and clarification here? What was happening? And we got like, I'm not going to engage in any more communications with you. You know, we got a smattering of little bits and pieces. He didn't answer the main questions. It's all a big wall of secrecy, guys, right? I mean, some people are of the opinion that it's a Freemason wall. Yeah, I won't go that far, but I, th I definitely think it's a criminal racket taking place. So these guys know they're in a criminal racket. And so f up to now, they've got away with it and they're all complacent about it. It's a big game for them. Money, 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 money. HMC takes makes a killing in this. Did you know, by the way, when you don't pay your council tax, right, you get challenged as council tax taken to court, they charge you 65 quid, don't they? You've seen that because I don't your bill, right? So they do a bulk order for, say, 500 people, right? And they add 65 quid on each of those bills. You do the maths on it, right? The complaint they've put in cost him 65 quid, and yet they're taking 65 quid off each individual case. Money, 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 money. These are not places of law, they're not places of justice, they're places of business. And as regarding your codes of conduct, guys, we do not see you as being justice, okay? It says it must be seen to provide justice and seen to provide, you know, uh, 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 professional standards. We don't see it, guys. We don't see it. Trust me. We've got a room full of people here that don't see it. Well, why would she be re reluctant to not divulge what jurisdiction she was under? Because it's not court. Yeah. I, 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 will, I will go into, I'll go back right. to that, I promise you I'll go back to that, right? right. I'll see if that's a surprise for the end, okay? All right. Well, the, the big one is, because she's sitting, if she says it's anything other than oh, whether that, that coat of arms is, I've got every right to put her under arrest, yeah. okay? okay. Uh, anyway. Wait, I started trying not because I was scared, which I was scared. I started crying thinking why I should be doing that in yeah. a country of supposed democracy. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why should she be standing there facing a criminal bloody tribunal hearing when and, and all the threats and the, 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 the collusion that's happened with the judiciary and the complete non separation of powers we've got now? These guys are colluding together. It's a money making racket to drag innocent little ladies like that in front of them to bully, harass, and threaten them. Give us your money, we'll send big guys around and, and hurt you. You know, that's why she's in tears. She feels absolutely helpless because there is no law in this country anymore and there is no justice anymore. And the magistrate's court system is completely, utterly, bottom to top, corrupted. Okay? It's a money making racket and they're doing very nice whatever. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a room full of people who agree with me here. Uh, so, so she says, Madam, uh, talk English is not a first language and experience dealing with authority figures under the Soviet regime. I feel intimidated in fear and ill speaking directly to you and I am unable to cross-examine the complainant. Therefore, to provide some measure of equality, I would prefer that my partner, Rob, moi, uh, speak on my behalf. So that point, the judge said, of course we've got equality in this court. That's why I'm here to ensure we get equality. I can assure we'll have equality in this court. I'm looking at the court and I'm seeing the council got a qualified solicitor and I've got a judge who's hired as an, an arbitrator. There's some sort of collusion going on there between the council and the HMCTS. And the only person that doesn't seem to be part of this sort of coven is a good lady. So I'm not seeing what the quality is. The judge might be in there saying she's impartial. She might be acting as an arbitrator and partial arbitrator. But unfortunately, you'll find out, as I'll explain later on, right? Is she that impartial? Okay, there's money behind us. There'd be targets. They've got cost centres, okay? We can't guarantee that impartiality, right? Uh, I didn't choose a judge. You didn't choose a judge, did you? No, you ran under threats. Is that equal? Huh? Okay. So the council demanded some information from us, from, from a good lady, right? And she's, give us information, or we'll hurt you, we'll send big guys around to come and hurt you and take your stuff, right? We asked the council for information back, and his blank is out. Is that a quality? They've got discovery from us and disclosure from us. We've, we've provided everything they wanted, to a certain extent. They've provided us nothing in return. Is that equality? We walking into that hearing equal? No, there's no equality there at all. So they're not getting customer satisfaction. Customer satisfaction, exactly. We're customers of the court, but anyway, couldn't make it up. Anyway, uh, 
So, uh, so the judge made a big deal about it, it was a quality, and the coroner shouted it from the back, how can you have a quality if you don't even know what bloody jurisdiction we're under? Okay, at that point I was told you might be asked to leave. Yeah, okay. Uh, I draw your attention to the underlying sentence, you should carry it on. I draw your attention to the underlying sentence in paragraph 2 of the, the defence statement. It was a response statement, not a defence statement. I don't like the word defence because it, it's, it's got a meaning, it's got a, I, it's got a weight to it. You know, response means you're just responding to somebody whinging at you. A defence means it gives it more substance. But anyway, so a response statement. The states are from the authority of the United Nations Declaration of 1998. I'll go over that shortly. This is one you all need to know. That everyone, in quote, that everyone has the right individually and in association with others to offer and provide professionally qualified legal assistance or other such relevant advice and assistance in defending human rights and fundamental freedoms. Quote, end quote. Okay? I'll repeat that again. Everyone has the right individually and in association with others to offer and provide qualified legal assistance or other such relevant advice and assistance in defending human rights and fundamental freedoms. Well, Judge A pounced on that one. I am a qualified legal professional. I am here to offer, they've obviously read all stuff, you know. I am here to offer you that professional qualified legal advice and that's what I'm here for. I'll look after you and no. you don't have to worry she about said, it. She said, no, I don't allow you because it will be... Ah, hold on, I'm not going to have it yet. Yeah, yeah, I do know, I do know that, right. She should make a deal with that. So next to that point, goes, no, let me repeat the second part of that sentence. Or other such relevant advice and assistance in defending human rights and fundamental freedoms. What we're trying to do is get me, the natural person, representing mother half as the legal person using the special power of attorney. Using the power of attorney, okay? Uh, at that point, the judge said, no, I'm not going to allow that because Rob, identify me as a natural person, Rob would not be impartial. <laughs> I've sat about What? I'm there acting as her, her representative of her attorney. I'm acting an instruction from her. I'm not impartial. Who is the council solicitor? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, 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 I guess when this woman's losing the house, we, I think we caught her off guard. I think we did catch her off guard, you know. I mean, I, I, I'm sure she has a nice lady. I'm sure she's a nice lady when she takes that bloody wig and that off, you know. She's a wig and cloak off. I'm sure she's a, lady, she's a lovely woman. But, uh, but, I mean, doing stuff like that was, was pretty bad, you know. So she denied me as an actual person the, the ability to go in there and represent my good lady. And she denied my good lady the ability to be independently represented, okay. Uh, and she did that, she mentioned that twice. So Ines, my lady, carried on, as Rob will defend my human rights and fundamental freedoms and I find them competent and with no conflict of interest, I invoke that international authority of the United Nations to allow to speak to me today. What we're doing is we're playing a power game. They've brought some authorities into that room, limited to the arm, we're bringing bigger authorities in. They're, they're presuming some power of attorney over Ness. The judge, the judge knew what was happening. I was challenging her power of attorney. She's, a, she's acting as power of appointment, power of attorney, to act as the advocate for her, my good lady. We've stepped in with a signed, certified deed with the donor and the donee in the room. You don't get any better than that, do you? That's pretty, that's pretty, pretty, pretty big authority to speak about for someone. Well, the judge is bringing to the room as an, authority, as, as an opinion, as a presumption. We've got it on paper. Poof. So that's the authority, right? So. The judge was desperately trying to get to get my good lady to surrender to the judges, to acquiesce to the judges' uh, uh, reassurances that she would represent her and be fair about it, you know, and give proper legal advice. Yeah, okay. There was a power struggle taking place, and these hearings are all about power struggles. You do not surrender your freedoms. Do not surrender your powers. They kept pushing me. Said yes, yes, yes. But can you sit there now? And uh, yes, yes, yes. And I was all the time saying just, just a second, and I will breathe again. <laughs> and it's just a second, mother. Say yes, yes, yes. But just can you sit, uh, please? And will the uh, the council? What do you want to say? And I'm sorry, madam. Can I still treat my rights? Can I still? So they okay. kept she, they kept trying to to push me. Fair away. Push me away. Surface barking just back at us. Get back in your cage. Away. You know? and, and, and agree to everything. And just just agree to it and we'll, we'll let you know how much you've got to pay at the end of it, you know. Uh, so, as she, 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 she finished that, uh, 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 so she's invoking international authority in the United Nations, right? Which we've already established that this, this judge is a representative of the state and the state has signed his international treaties, okay? Uh, and therefore, as this representative, she can't refuse it. Her boss has agreed to these. She can't refuse it, okay? So there's a power struggle taking place. So we're using that authority that she's, comply she's got to comply with as authority protecting us, okay? Uh, 
So we've trumped them on authority in that hearing. We've trumped them on authority. Uh, uh, there's more. You will note that a certified copy of the appointment of power of attorney of deed has been submitted to the case filed, <coughs> authorising this man as an actual person or a legal person, I left that door open, to represent me in all matters to do with this matter. Uh, this, this matter, right? So she made it quite clear. The judge at that point again said, no, I'm not going to allow it. So she turned around and looked at me and I went, carry on. So she went on to the next section. So she says, on page six of the Bangalore Principles of Judicial Conduct 2002, it states that, quote, ensuring equality of treatment to all before the courts is essential to due, to due performance of the judicial office, end quote. So it's equality of treatment to all. It doesn't say all except whoever, blah, blah. All, it's pretty, it's pretty inclusive for me, yeah? Uh, this is, that is the principle, and this is my lady reading again. That is the principle of equality. The application is contained in sections 5.1 to 5.1 of the Bangalore Principles of Judicial Conduct 2002, and it's very clear from those sections that, quote, a judge is not permitted to discriminate against any person, any person, on irrelevant grounds such as social status or the like causes, end quote. It doesn't say any legal person or the natural person, it says any person, that's all inclusive. So that's include me as a natural person, okay? That's an authority I can throw at them, okay? Uh, the principle and application do not differentiate between natural person or legal person. The judge is trying to tell her to sit down at this point. And she's she's yes, talking. Yeah, 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 I know about Bangalore principles. I know principles. the Bangalore principles, and oh, I'm shouting in the back, well, you don't, you're not observing them. Of course she knows everything, yeah. yeah I know the Bangalore principles, I'm a judge. You don't need to educate me in Bangalore don't principles. Need. I think I do. Yeah, for anyway. the yeah, you might know them, you're not actually applying them. Uh, do not differentiate between natural person and legal person and therefore it can be drawn that both forms of person are covered equally by this obligation on you madam and thus Rob may represent me today as either a natural or legal person without fear of discrimination statement fact may I have Rob represent me here today and again she refused mm -hmm. right? uh, at that point uh, she looked at me and I gave her a nod and I said we're leaving okay so at that point she said, Madam, you are in breach of your professional code of conduct and you're in breach of your obligations and duties to uphold my fundamental freedoms and my human rights and further that I feel frightened and distressed and discriminated against and thus I withdraw from this hearing as you dishonour yourself and for the reasons stated. Okay. And the Madam said, of course you can withdraw. You have the right to leave the court. Yeah, we know. Bye. Of course you can. Thank you very much. So uh, when I said, but English still is not my natural language. Oh yes, that's right. Uh, she's talking English, not my natural language, because she's not, it's, it's not a case of like, I don't speak English. She speaks relatively good English, it's just she's not used to speaking English in such a high, high pressure environment where the, the meaning of the words is so specific, you know, against these people that look trying to try to keep treated equally and not try to trip her up and not try to get her to use her own words. I mean, for example, the Justice Clark at the start asked her, asked her, what's your address? You say, what do you mean by the word address? And she says, and he says, uh, that I'm some, I'm sometimes domiciled at blah 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 blah, which is which we're all sometimes domiciled, right? Uh, you don't live anywhere, right? But sometimes domiciled. So she's been, I'm sure what she's done is she's fraudulently now, and I'll say this on the record, right? She's fraudulently not recognised. And Essa said sometimes do, domiciled, and I'll bet in a little tick she's went, yeah, lives at address. She's accepted this address, trying to create some sort of joined up sneakily and actually in controversy what was actually said in that court, right? I'm interested in seeing that original document. Anyway, so uh, that was essentially, I mean, that girl was so brave, she stood the face that judge down, you know. But I mean, I would have done it, but I need to be the natural person because we're doing that, we're playing a, a bigger game here, you know. So, uh, the language, it isn't forgotten. Yeah, oh, so the language one, yes. Yeah, so she, uh, 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 the judge says, well, I think your language is adequate. Then she got us off the top of her head, right? And she said, what professional qualifications do you have, madam, to make in that professional judgment? And that, that caught her off guard, actually. <laughs> As it would do. I wonder why. Yeah. As it would do. Because she said, ah, mm, mm, we probably, and she started looking at the council girl, woman, and she said, we probably could consider a translator. Probably. She turned to the council solicitor and says, can we get a translator? Yeah. Could 
Why is it your judge the coach to provide a translator? Because we can't to get a translator. That means expenses. Translators are expensive. And, and another thing which she also said, when I said, yes, but you can get me a translator, but still I will have to translate all these legalese back into Russian because I don't know. Uh, I'm just still frightened, intimidated, exactly. and scared of speaking to people. We've put through a notice there to say she's scared of speaking directly because they live in the Soviet regime. She's got natural fear of these bullying authority figures who have these big hats and they've got big heads to fit underneath them and think they're powerful, you know. Uh, she's got a fear of these people because they are nasty. They are nasty. Uh, so anyway, but if I she turned around to the council solicitor and said, can we get a translator here? I'm going, brr, who's running this hearing today? I was like, if it was a court, it should be a court translator, surely. Okay, anyway, right, if you go through the council, uh, Wigan Council Constitution, and all you people, I've, I've asked people to provide me copies of the council constitutions, I haven't had any yet, please get me a copy of your council constitution, right? I've got Wiggins, please get a copy of your council constitution, right? Uh, there's some interesting stuff turning up from around the country, people are sending me that's right. And it states under section page 59 of the Wigan Council Constitution, Wigan Borough Council, sorry, Wigan Borough Council Constitution, page 59, for those of you who live in the Wigan area, right, get a copy, it's on the, it's on the internet, right, and it says in section 13.8, right, how's this, decisions making by board, council bodies acting as tribunals, decision making by council bodies acting as tribunals, tribunals, the council, a councillor or an officer acting as a tribunal or as in a quasi-judicial manner or determining slash considering other than for the purposes of giving advice, the civil rights and obligations or the criminal responsibility of any person will follow a proper procedure which accords with the requirements of natural justice and the right to a fair trial contained in Article 6 of the European Convention of Human Rights. Why can't you jump to the page of me and go, what is that? What's that about, you know? Uh, anyway, that's what we were on a Friday. It is a council body acting as a tribunal. Okay? Now, to give some sort of semblance of independence, they brought in a judge to come in and act as a tribunal. So they're actually not employed by the council. They're brought in under CTI, HHC, I'm sure there's fees getting paid for all this stuff, you know, so again, you can question the full independence of it. So, I mean, we'll see the judge was there. Uh, uh, purely and in, 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 uh, 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 totally impartial. I'm not saying she was a purely partial to the council, but she certainly wasn't completely impartial, just by the total setup of it, you know. So, uh, but some jumps out of that natural justice. So it says it accords with the requirements of natural justice. So that's obviously the rules that I'm applying, applying in those in that hearing. <coughs> what is natural justice? So I'm digging around as I do, and I come across this thing called. Uh, I go from Australia. What is meant by principles of natural justice and procedural fairness? What's that? Uh, under natural justice, right? Uh, essentially, it's for employee tribunals, servant tribunals. Okay. Now we're starting to see what these things are. Okay. This is where the subterfuge is. They brought you in an employee tribunal. You are not an employee. You can stand there and go, piss off. Right, you, 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 your consent is required, right? You must, they must have your consent, they must have taken power from you to do that, right? They do not want us to know that because we can start challenging it, okay? So this is why I'll subterfuge, this is why she didn't want to mention jurisdiction. Okay? Because uh, there is no jurisdiction. There's no judicial jurisdiction. This is, I don't know the word is, the authority of a company. It's no jurisdiction as such. Sure, that's what it is. That's a good word for a fraud. It's a very good word for a fraud, Act 2006, Section 2, 3, and 4. By omission. By omission, uh, by misrepresentation in the Fraud Act, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a whole raft of things we're looking at misconduct in public office, fraud, you know, the. the, the uh, uh, that would go as far as that at the moment. But uh, there's, there's, there's a lot we're working on, we've got a team working on it at the moment, don't we? So, uh, the opportunity, so what is meant by principles of natural justice and procedural fairness? The opportunity to be heard by an impartial decision maker is at the hearts of rules of natural justice and procedural fairness. The rules of natural justice apply whenever the rights, property or legitimate expectations of an individual are affected by a decision. Right? So it's, 
Men I won't go through the whole thing. You can, you can, if you, it's, it's on the Freedom Northwest website. Have a look at yourself. It's only two pages. Uh, there's three rules of natural justice. One is called the hearing rule. The hearing rule demands that a decision maker must give an opportunity to a person whose interests may be adversely affected by their decision, the opportunity to be heard. Hearing heard. Okay, so replying with that. Complying with that. Next one is the bias rule. The bias rule demands that the decision maker should be disinterested and or unbiased in the matter to be decided. Well, I've been in tribunals before. I've been in real big uh, legal cases. Uh, big stuff, multi-million pound stuff as legal witnesses and uh, both sides had to agree who the, the arbitrator was to ensure that both sides were satisfied of the independence of the arbitrator. What's happened is the council have basically told her, you must come to us, blah blah blah, blah right? And what they're doing is offering her a thing called alternative dispute resolution. Now before you go to court, right, you need to attend with to do a thing that's called alternative dispute resolution, right? Look it up. It's on, I think I've dumped it on the Freedom North West file section again. Look it up. Uh, what it is, is the parties must have exhausted all other avenues before they actually go to court. Okay? And that way you're not wasting court time with nonsense, right? It's, you can understand that, right? So, this will turn to dispute resolution. If one party refuses to take part in that or doesn't fully comply with it, when you go to the main court, the judge will weigh against the party who has not pursued alternative dispute resolution or has refused it. The judge can weigh against them, which could be just signing summary warrants, doesn't it? The judge can see what they've not turned up, saying there's somebody warned, right? So this is the bait and switch they're putting on us. This is the bait and switch. They're throwing a form of alternative dispute resolution at us, okay? We can say, hold on, I don't agree to that. I've got another way of, a way of alternative dispute resolution. Well, there's some funny stuff happening in the background with that at the moment, uh, of alternatives we can throw at them. Because we, uh, as far as we're aware, it's not a problem to say, hold on, I don't agree with your alternative dispute resolution method. I've got another one, so let's negotiate how we can resolve this amicably and so we can both agree on it. Okay? At the moment we're just accepting this. Because they're threatening this Sean McNally, okay? uh, Director of Crime. Because uh, he offered threats. You go to court or issue warrants. That's not exactly so amicable and fair and partial, is it? Okay? Does he sit in London, I wonder? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think he's down, he's down south somewhere, yeah. Mm. He's not wigging this, he's one of the top dogs. No, I think it's pretty far away from Wigan. Absolutely. Well, it's not signed, it's not signed, it's just his name is put on, it's not signed. It's obviously a quick phone call down to London. You authorise that. Yeah, okay, let's go get him. <laughs> a surf jumped out of the box, let him batter him back into place. <laughs> let's kick the shit out of him, frighten him, put him back in the box. You know? Anyway, tough guy. The no evidence rule is the third rule. The no evidence rule means, in essence, that a decision that is eventually made when it must be based on logical evidence proven in the balance of probabilities, that is, the alleged behaviour is more or, is more likely to have occurred than not. Which is fair enough. Okay? Now, go further down as a few things jump in. Remember saying that a power play taking place in this, this, this tribunal hearing, where the judge is desperate trying to take power, to sort of absorb power, to get him a good lady to acquiesce some of that power, to surrender that power to her. She needs that power, right? Because uh, at the moment they're, they're, they're presuming it. So what we did is we went in and, and rebutted their power, revoked it and challenged it head on and brought bigger authority to the table. So and there it says, what is relevant or irrelevant will depend on instrument, legislation or policy conferring the power on the decision maker. Right, so this is council, so what, what who, who, power, so the referring to the word power there. Uh, administration, an administrative decision maker or authority may not exercise their power unreasonably. Power. Natural justice and procedural fairness are common law concepts. That's just a wee I thought I add on there. So that word power, guys, is the most powerful little word. Actually, it is. It's the most powerful word in your legal dictionary. Look up. Word power. It's what they use and what we are surrendering to them. Right? We do not have to surrender power. But we do it every day. If you don't, if you don't know what they're doing, they will take power from you. We've know they've done it. So you have to be wide awake to the fact not to surrender power to these buggers because the minute you surrender just a bit of power, bang, they're on you. Okay, so the, uh, the, 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 the they actually even couldn't kick you out as my representative sitting no. shouting because it was not a It's not a court. All it can do me for is a private building, get security to move me, but there's no contempt. Okay, 
Right, just to read through a section five of the Bangalore Principles was talking about in that, 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 that uh, script. The script, by the way, is on the uh, Freedom Northwest website. Everything I do is public. I don't hide in the shadows like Sean McNally or the rest of these characters, right? I don't hide behind titles and shadows and pretend I'm a tough guy. I'm a fucking tough guy. Okay. <laughs> I'm happy to stand up and go public. I'm my best defence. We all are. The fact you're sitting here today, guys, you guys have got balls standing here today because you're willing to take this stuff on board and run with it yourselves. We all are tough guys. right? And these guys know it now and they're getting frightened. They know we are, we are starting to rear up at them and we're taking our power back. I mean power, I don't mean it's some sort of stupid political left wing, right, right wing, I'm talking about genuine, your fundamental power. Right, your freedom to contract. Okay, right. So, uh, the art, uh, section five of this uh, Bangalore principles: ensuring equality of treatment to all before the court is essential to the due performance of judicial office. So, it's the equality of treatment to all, not just legal persons, not just people at Wigan Council have decided, or or, or Wigan Magistrates Court, or Sean McNally, or whoever. Right, all. Okay, uh, the application. That's a principle. The application of that is one. 5.1. A judge shall be aware of and understand diversity in society and differences arising from various sources, including but not limited to race, colour, sex, religion, national origin, caste, disability, age, marital status, sexual orientation, social and economic status, and other like causes, which are known as irrelevant grounds. So social status and other like causes. Being a natural person is social status. Of course it is. Uh, 5.2, a judge shall not in the performance of judicial duties by word or conduct manifest bias or prejudice towards any person or group on irrelevant grounds. Okay, she sort of manifested prejudice upon me, didn't she? As a natural person, but anyway. A judge, this is 5.3, a judge shall carry out judicial duties with appropriate consideration for all persons and as the parties, witnesses, lawyers, court staff and judicial colleagues without differentiation on any ground immaterial to the proper performance of such duties. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, 5.4. A judge shall not knowingly permit court staff or others subject to the judge's influence. That's an interesting one. That would be Judicial Justice Clark. Assistant Justice Clark. So a judge shall not knowingly permit court staff or others subject to the judge's influence, direction or control to differentiate between persons concerned. How good is that? Natural or legal? in a matter before the judge or any, on, any, on any irrelevant ground. Wow. 5.5. A judge shall require lawyers and proceedings before the court to refrain from manifesting by words of conduct, bias or prejudice based on relevant grounds, except and as are legally relevant to an issue in proceedings, maybe the subject of legal advocacy, legitimate advocacy, right? So it's all to do with you representing the person, you, 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 you're allowed to be partial representing the person. But in there it states quite clearly that it's all persons. Not just legal persons, they can't ignore it. It's in there. So uh, we've established what the courts are. These 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 magistrates' court hearings. We've got a judge sitting under the royal coat of arms, refusing to give us a jurisdiction. Fraud, black and white, outright utter fraud. Right? Watch your space. Those kind of all principles only apply to a judge as sitting under the crown, doesn't it? I mean, the scenario we're talking about. That's here, yeah. We. we but then we can argue that her as a judge, she should yeah. know this. Yeah. Well, I know. I know she, she's she sitting know. under a court of arms, she knows it's wrong. But whether she has to adhere to it, because she's not actually sitting under the, the Crown's authority. But she has she's told not herself as a judge. that she knows about yeah. the okay, principles, like said, and she yeah. will. If she said that, that means that she openly admitted, and she openly admitted that she was a judge here. Yeah, yeah well, that's what she didn't say. I, I agree with what you're saying. I do I agree with what you're saying. This is something we need to really find out, right? If she's acting as a sort of officer of court or yeah. whatever, or the arbitrator of court, yeah. under oath of court, right? it could be she's not subject to that, in which case yeah. we need to kick up a stink. Yeah. Yeah, that's what she I'm should saying. be subject to that. If she's under somebody else's employment at that time, do you think she'll actually register with the Inland Revenue? No, we are sure, we, we're absolutely sure. <laughs> we're absolutely sure. No, we're absolutely sure what's happened is that the council's paying HMCTS for arbitration facilities. Right. So they're doing it the indirect route, you know. Because this is too obvious to get in and be the judge directly. Like, no cash in payments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Judges are exempt income tax. Judges are exempt income tax, then, though, that one. Exempt from 
She's not, no, she, I don't care. Well, she's not getting paid directly by the council. Bottom line yeah. is, she's not getting paid directly by the council. The council, as far as we're paying the HMCTS, we're not going to tell you this. You go, you, you, you go there and try and ask us questions. Why are they not telling us this? What's all the secrecy about? Why all the Skull subterfuge, the secrecy and lies and, and changing oh, hats and changing titles and scurrying around the little fucking rats with your hands in their pockets? What is it? What is all the was all this about? Can we not have a... As, we, as, we said, as I said in the last, the last meeting, all I'm looking for is honesty, dignity. See the Bangalore principles? That's all we're looking for. A bit of honesty, a bit of openness, a bit of independence within the judiciary. Because at the moment, guys, we are not seeing it. And there's a room full, you can't see here, there's a room full here, right? There's an internet full of people out there, and more of us are learning every single day. If you guys are not afraid now, you better start getting afraid, because the people are waking up to this, and we're having, we're having enough of it, we're not having any more. We are not having any more of it. Absolutely and if not. you are now, what you're doing now is you are completely eroding the foundation of the judiciary to the point now where people have no faith in it, they've no trust in it. We know it's a big boys club, we know it's a criminal racket, it's all about making money, it's a business. There's no, it doesn't serve us anymore, it's all about a money making racket to take our money off us. It's there to control us, not to serve us. That is the view of the people, okay? So you can run around pretending that you think this is, we're priding a public service. No, you're not, guys. You really aren't. We've no faith in you anymore. We think you're a lying bunch of scumbags. That's the that's the bottom line here. A bunch of females and scumbags. We'll end it here anyway, guys. So uh, thank you very much for, for, for listening to me.